Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies, on this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, I'm interviewing Robert Johnson. He's the founder and CEO of a premium mushroom product company known as Micro Boost. He's also the founder and CEO of a supplement manufacturer known as Custom Capsule Consultants. He's a cannabis and hemp industry veteran. He's a health product expert, psychedelic advocate, and seasoned entrepreneur with a 20 year track record of launching successful startup businesses in new and emerging markets. Now, he and I are going to be talking about mushrooms today, but we're not talking about psychedelics. We're talking about mushrooms that are functional. So what does that mean? Ones that can help with your cognitive health, reducing inflammation, helping build resilience to infections. This is a big deal. A lot of people are promoting mushrooms, but... We need to be thinking about quality. We need to be thinking about efficacy. We need to be making sure that what you're spending money on is actually giving you what you paid for. And so uh, Robert and I are gonna talk all about that today and give you a really good breakdown of how his company is making sure that you are getting what you're paying for in every single dose. So let's introduce you to Robert, otherwise known as Bob Johnson. Hey, Hill Junkies, I have Bob Johnson on today, and we're going to be talking about mushrooms today and medicinal mushrooms. And whenever I tell people I want to talk about medicinal mushrooms, everybody seems to do this like, oh, no, oh, no, she's going to talk about psychedelics. I'm like, guys, there's so much more to mushrooms. I don't know how we don't know this, but well, here we are. So, Bob, welcome to the Health Fix podcast. Oh, thanks a lot, Janine. Really excited to talk to you. Oh, I, I get that all the time, too. You know, we uh, we go to conferences. We have, like, our lion's mane gummies and, you know, little samplers for people to try. And people will come up and they're like, oh, uh, what's in that? And it's just like, well, it's some, you know, functional mushrooms. They're good for your health. They're like, well, uh, I better not. I got I to gotta drive. I'm just like, oh, no, they're they're not psychedelic at all. They're just like a, a health supplement. And they're, people kind of look a second time and then they're like, uh, still, I better not, you know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's definitely a conversation I have on a, on a daily basis. Well, and it's something that it makes me laugh, you know, and, and, and let's be honest, like, you know, people have now seen the the cannabis edibles and they look like the gummies, you know? And so a lot of people see gummies now. And if we attach it to mushroom, it instantly comes, you know, into that thing where like, Ooh, I don't know. So, you know, today we're definitely want to talk about how we can dispel some, of, some of the myths in particular. And of course, with, with your company micro boost, I love, I love the play on words there with it, because I mean, that is the thing where I am kind of headed towards with a lot of my patients is using lion's mane for focus, using the brain side of things, you know, and really helping folks understand what power mushrooms have for the brain. So obviously you came to own a company that has mushrooms. So my, my first question is what brought you to mushrooms? What did you, what was your like first experiment or any of it in that case? I'd love to hear what brought you to them. Yeah, well, I was in the cannabis industry for a decade here in Los Angeles. And uh, in 2018, as cannabis was legalizing, we sold our company and the CTO of the company and I decided to start a CBD um, hemp supplement manufacturing company. And, um, you know, we had a lot of specialty and a lot of experience in making soft gel capsules and gummies and you know, products for cannabis for, for so long. And then when hemp became federally legal, we we're like, oh, this is going to be an opportunity where we can, you know, make this for, for our brands and for a bunch of other brands. But, you know, when you buy a, a soft gel and a gummy machine, you're not just limited to hemp, right? So <laughs> we started working with, uh, with all sorts of different supplement companies and we're custom manufacturing products for people. And so I got a lot of calls about different trendy ingredients you know and i started to see a pattern people calling they're asking about ashwagandha or elderberry or uh, lion's mane was one that just kept coming up over and over and i'd heard about lion's mane but it wasn't until you know i was hired to start formulating products for people that i really started to understand you know what it can do for you and um, you know specifically my role was understanding how much lion's mane was going to be a meaningful amount to put into a product as I'm, I'm designing a product for 
uh, a brand, I want to make it so, you know, if their, their customers try it, they're going to have a noticeable effect and, you know, want to come back. And so uh, one thing I kept coming up against is that lion's mane or any mushroom, like depending on who you ask, uh, a therapeutic amount is anywhere between like 800 milligrams and 3000 milligrams, which if you're making a really small soft gel pill, that's a lot of ingredients to put into a single serving. And I found that uh, a lot of these supplement companies, you know, they weren't so interested as much as, you know, making the, the best possible product as just like putting these trendy ingredients on the label so they can have some sort of label claim and, uh, you know, get their, their customer to buy it. But essentially then, as I was understanding it, what they're selling is like a placebo at best. And, uh, and so I wanted to, to get into mushrooms, but with these little form factors, I was just kind of limited, right? I didn't want to make a product where you have to take 17 pills <laughs> to get uh, a therapeutic dose. So I really started looking for companies that were making like concentrations of these things, mm -hmm. right? This is, this is how we did product manufacturing and cannabis for years. You know, you don't, you don't put a, a big bag of grass into a little gummy, you know, you make a, an extraction, a concentration of the active ingredient in it. In, uh, in cannabis's case, THC, uh, but in lion's mane and different mushroom cases, you know, I'm understanding what are the actives in these things? How can we, you know, isolate them or, or concentrate them and put them into a really powerful little product? And so um, uh, we wanted to do mushrooms for years, but it wasn't until I found this company that was making these organic fruiting body extracts that it really became viable for us because I wasn't interested. I don't even really understand the business model of sort of tricking your customer into buying something that you're just hoping they're going to convince themselves that it's doing something for them. You know, the, the cost, the time of, of acquiring a new customer, you know, the, the idea is you want to give them an awesome product that, you know, not only that they're going to buy again, but hopefully, you know, tell their friends about. I Absolutely. Absolutely. It's interesting you mentioned that because I noticed that on your website, you were talking about being skeptical of supplements and, and things of that nature. And, and yeah, you know, when there's such a broad amount that's effective based on research, you're like, you know, even as a doc, you go, all right, I don't know, you know, how much how much is someone going to get an effect? And of course, we want something to be potent. Now, I noticed that your your soft gels with the the lion's mane in particular have quite, I mean, very minimal ingredients. So you found a way to be able to make gel caps with clean ingredients for that matter too. Tell us a little bit about that in terms of trying to figure out, you know, the the scheme of things for creating those gel caps. And, you know, now that we know that you're getting the stuff in there, how do you make a gel cap like that? Yeah, so we, we had a lot of experience with, uh, with gelatin soft gels in the cannabis business. And, you know, we were using THC, oil and making really metered dosages back back early on when uh when edibles were a real issue right like you talked about right at the beginning mm -hmm. you know, some people have like a, a fear of uh of a thc gummy because of probably some you know bad experience and when i when i first started in the business in 2008 that was exactly how products were sold Right. You would go in and it's just like, well, how strong is this brownie? Let me check the packaging. Oh, it's 10 skull and crossbones. You know, you have no idea what uh, what that means. And so my whole career has been about legitimizing plant based medicine by making it repeatable, measurable, consistent. So when people find, you know, an amount that works for them, you know, they don't have to guess. And sometimes, you know, sometimes it's helpful and sometimes, you know, they're high on the couch for three days. You know, you didn't, that was, that, was, uh, that was not what we wanted. But, you know, so I'm always just trying to, you know, look into the future and and make a, a better product. So when we started Custom Capsule Consultants, which is our, our supplement manufacturing company, we really wanted to master vegan soft gels. And there's a reason why 99.9% .9 of soft gels on the market are gelatin, is they're much easier to make, you know, mass produce them. Uh, and, and vegan soft gels are really finicky. You know, you have to have the, the temperature, the humidity just right. 
Um, they're made with, uh, with tapioca starch rather than gelatin. And, uh, anyways, you know, if you're making a, a health product, you know, I've never had somebody, even if they're a meat eater request, I need some animal bones in my, you know, mushroom supplements. Um, so the vegan soft gels was the first thing that we had to, uh, figure out and really master. And that was, that was not easy. But, uh, but then once we did that, yeah, we were working with a, a PhD pharmacologist from USC, and she was uh, an expert in product formulation, and then also worked for a cannabis company for years as their chief scientific officer. Uh, and it was a gummy company. So it was this perfect uh, confluence of background, you know, she knows, she knows medicine and, and measurements and research and development for designing products. And then she also knew like, how to make it into a delicious raspberry gummy. <laughs> uh, and so once we understood and then found this company with the, the concentration, you know, also some things that people don't normally do is put powderized ingredients into soft gels. But yeah. in my experience, you know, the difference between a soft gel and a two piece capsule that, you know, it has the, a bunch of powder in it is, and, you know, it really depends on the product. I wouldn't say one is better than the other. But in my experience, I found that soft gels have a much higher perceived value, you know, mm -hmm. because you can't make uh, soft gels in your garage, right? You can pack a, a capsule with powder by hand and, you know, there's uh, some sort of questionable ingredients in there maybe. And, uh, and it just, you know, looks like a, a big horse pill. And so we just wanted to make something that was sexy, that was, you know, easy to swallow, that was good for you, and was going to be really beneficial. And one of the just like kind of bonuses of the tapioca starch was the shell just naturally has a higher pH than uh, than gelatin. And a lot of gelatin soft gel companies will do or will add what is called an enteric coating on the on the gel shell to raise the pH. And the reason that they do that is so it doesn't break down in your stomach and your stomach acid destroy a lot of whatever active ingredients are in there. Rather, it'll break down in the intestine and just lead to, you know, more absorption of the, the product that's actually in there or uh, bioavailability is another, you know, vocab word that, yep. that they use for that. And so that, that was a cool, you know, just extra benefit. One, you know, uh, health conscious people are looking for, for increasingly more and more vegetarian products. And then two, just that it, that it actually works better than a gelatin soft gel was, uh, was a nice added bonus. Well, that makes sense. That makes sense. It's really cool because I think a lot of people don't, I mean, yes, I could see the perceived value with the gel caps. I know some people tolerate them, some people don't, but maybe part of that non-tolerance is that pH. Um, and, and something of that nature could be irritating. I've just found that over the years, I've also found people, you know, telling me, Hey doc, I'm pooping the capsules. And I'm like, that's not ah. good. That's yeah. not good. <laughs> like, something's up with your gut, but you know, it's, it's, it's delivery, right? It's delivery. And so really interesting that you're using powder within a gel cap. I, that's not something I'm, I'm familiar with. Usually it's a liquid extract within the gel cap. Yeah, so there is a there is a way to uh, homogenize and suspend powderized ingredients up to a degree into uh, an oil based soft gel because that's that's the difference between a, a soft gel and a capsule. It's all oil filled, um, but uh, but yeah, we found uh, we found a way with uh, Carolina's help, this uh, PhD whiz kid, and uh, and yeah, we've been been making products ever since. You know. Uh, We've, we've definitely tried a lot of products that that didn't work and, you know, and have to go back to the drawing board. But uh, but in this case, yeah, we have three different uh, formulas. So we're just combining different mushrooms based on their benefits for, you know, targeted effects. So like we uh, we have a brain formula. It's my personal favorite. It's just a combo of lion's mane and cordyceps. And so lion's mane is like a cognitive enhancer and also prevents against um, uh, cognitive uh, issues like Alzheimer's, dementia. Uh, it does a couple of things that, you know, psychedelics are also being uh, credited for in more and more research, which is uh, neurogenesis, which is like the formation of new brain cells 
and neuroplasticity, which is connecting different brain cells that aren't normally connecting. You know, in extreme cases with psychedelics, that could lead to uh, synesthesia, you know, where you're seeing uh, or tasting color or seeing music and, you know, having your senses crosses, cross in ways that they don't normally do. Uh, but in, in Lion's Mane's case, you know, it's just making you more focused, uh, more alert, able to recall words better, just having better memory. And then uh, Cordyceps is a great combination for this, you know, go-getter product, in my opinion, because it's great for energy. Uh, it's great for the uh, respiratory system. Uh, so a lot of athletes use it as a pre-workout. And in fact, one of my favorite little factoids about cordyceps was the there was a Chinese uh, track Olympic team in the 90s, a women's uh, track team in the 90s that broke so many records and uh, and won so many medals that they were drug tested. And they passed all the drug tests and their coach credited cordyceps mushrooms for their, you know, extraordinary performance. Wow, that's cool. That's cool. I mean, yeah, cordyceps, I, I highly use with my athletes and definitely anybody who's looking for like an energy boost kind of situation as well. And, you know, considering with all the critters that run around these days in terms of bugs that we're getting exposed to, I also think that cordyceps has a nice little factor with the respiratory system too. So yeah, I've been seeing kind of the same thing. That's, I mean, the brain formulas in particular, I'm going to back up on that because I feel like a lot of folks at this day and age are like talking about having ADD or not being able to focus. And obviously part of it could be pathology, the other part could be life, right? We're just too distracted. So I'd love for you to speak about a little bit in terms of using the lion's mane if you have an, and cordyceps combination for in the moment focus. To, to get yourself honed in on something, get a project done, things of that nature. Are you seeing folks talking about using your product for that too, not in, you know, in addition to just the daily use? Yeah, I mean, everything is, you know, uh, part of my skepticism of supplements is people making claims like everything is just a, a magical pill that's like a cure-all, but, uh, but a combination of, uh, you know, awareness of your habits and a desire to change and improve I, I think is definitely essential. But, you know, in uh, my experience, I take the the brain soft gels every day, and then we have a mushroom coffee that's a mm -hmm. combination of, of all five of the, the mushrooms that we use in our products. And, you know, I'm a big coffee drinker. I'm a, I'm an entrepreneur. So I'm just always, you know, need, uh, need fuel, need a good attitude, need a good mood. And so I switched to the mushroom coffee about, you know, 18 months ago when we were, we started experimenting with it. And I found that, uh, yeah, my, my attention and uh, just, I, I think I like the way that you said it, living in the moment, I mm -hmm. think is what is uh, vital for me to concentrate on the task at hand, you know, focus on, on what I'm doing and not be, you know, Know, bouncing between uh, multiple computer screens or or multiple distractions, you know, at the same time. Um, but but I found yeah that my my sales uh, were really increasing the more I was drinking this mushroom coffee. I think like uh, the combination of being in a good mood, having good energy, not crashing in the afternoon uh, was uh, was really doing great for me. And so. And I found something that was going to be, you know, not only good for health, but uh, but good for my business and all of our employees, then uh, then I was hooked. And that got me just always just learning more. And whenever I'm just kind of an obsessive guy like that, whenever I find something that uh, I find interesting and then, you know, I, I find personally that uh, it's it's working in ways that I'm doing the research on, then I, I just can't get enough. And so. I write about mushrooms. I, I talk about mushrooms at, at conferences and I seek out people that have been doing this for a lot longer than I have and just try and absorb all their wisdom wherever I can. It's, it's huge. It's huge. You know, one of the things I think a lot of people would, would want to know about, because I, I have never been a coffee drinker. So drinking the mushroom coffee is, is easy for me, but a lot of people when switching, I love to hear people's protocols. what did you do to switch? Did you kind of titrate off or did you go cold Turkey on the coffee or what did you do to switch into your coffee? Oh, for a while I yeah. was definitely just 
adding a um, cup of mushroom coffee to my, you know, 24 ounces of, uh, of Starbucks or whatever I was drinking. Um, but, uh, but eventually, you know, I started cutting back. I noticed that my gut was, uh, was feeling a lot better in the mornings too, as I was cutting back on the, on the coffee. And, uh, you know, I think part of what made it easier for me to switch and for a lot of the people that have tried a micro boost is the taste, mm -hmm. you know, whenever we're developing a product, you know, I'll go and look online and find, you know, the 10 most popular uh, products in that category that I can find, buy them all, try them all, uh, you know, really evaluate them. And one common thing between most of them is they don't taste very good. Yeah. You know, and, you know, maybe coffee is an acquired taste too, but, uh, but, you know, when people, when that's like the most addictive, you know, heavily used drug on the planet, you know, making people switch uh, to, uh, to a mushroom thing that tastes like dirt, you know, is going to be a tough sell. So, Box. you know, I wanted to make something that had more mushrooms per serving than any product we'd ever made before and more than any mushroom coffee on the market. And I wanted it to taste delicious. And so uh, one way that we did that was uh, adding a, a lot of cacao. So it's got a little bit of uh, some organic coffee in it, only like 55 milligrams worth of, of caffeine, which is like a cup of Earl Grey tea or a third of a cup of coffee. Um, but the, the cacao just makes it taste like a delicious hot chocolate. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I've started doctoring mine, you know, just the way I like it. I put a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of cardamom. Uh, sometimes I even put it into like a, a peanut butter banana smoothie. So I've I've found lots of different ways. And on our on our social media now, like once a week, we're we're sharing a new recipe, and you know, just always trying to find more ways to enjoy it. Oh, that's incredibly helpful because you're right. A lot of them taste like dirt. And that is the number one complaint I get from a lot of my patients. So like, I'm trying to get off of coffee, but these mushroom coffees. Oh, they're so gross. So cacao, I mean, most people are not going to complain about a chocolatey flavor, like a mocha, probably kind of flavor. Yeah. And it sounds like you're going towards like a, a Latin flair with it a little bit, or or maybe even a, I don't know, Middle Eastern flair with the cardamom. It's kind of fun there. I like it. I like yeah. it. So, so let's talk about immune system a little bit and in the immunity blend that you have, because so many people turn to me and 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 say, look, look, doc, my my immune system's trashed from all the things that have happened in the last couple of years. I really need something that's going to be sustainable, that's going to help me, that I could take every single day. So, give us the scoop on your immunity blend there. Yeah, you know, I think the the main three things that mushrooms help in, like categorically wise, are the, the cognitive functions of stuff like lion's mane and brain enhancement. And then as far as immunity is concerned, uh, anti-inflammation, uh, inflammation, right? You know, inflammation is, inflammation is one of the leading causes of, you know, many illnesses in the body. And so almost every one of the mushrooms that we're working with is very anti-inflammatory. So that's a great start right there. And then the other thing is uh, the gut microbiome, you know, besides, uh, besides what's going on in your head, I think what's going on in your gut is really controlling our mood and our health, just like on a macro level, uh, more so than any other parts of our body. So those are the two areas that uh, I feel like mushrooms are helping us the most and is contributing to all sorts of other things um, because of overall health. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do tend like you're, you're right, the brain the inflammation and the immune system tend to be like kind of the three main areas. And definitely, I kind of feel like a lot of us, our immune system gets trashed as our inflammation goes up. And so if we're working on that balance, it definitely is a nice, nice blend there. So I guess my next question would be, okay, so you've got chaga, you've got reishi, and you've got turkey tail. We know, you know, a lot of people have been talking about the reishi and turkey tail for being immune. Chaga is kind of one that gets thrown out as like energy booster. This one, it kind of has like multiple, multiple uh, hats it wears there. And like you had said, these, these mushrooms do multiple things. What was the synergistic effect you were thinking about with the chaga and with the reishi and turkey tail? Did you guys think that? About yeah, it's the, 
antioxidant qualities in uh, uh in chaga, you know uh-huh. and so uh, that's the other thing that that mushrooms do in nature is uh-huh. transform right and so uh the getting rid of the the toxins in your body is uh, is also part of you know having a clean immune system makes sense Makes sense. Hey, health junkies, intrigued about the possibility of mushrooms to help you with concentration, focus, reducing inflammation, and maybe even helping you to increase your resistance to infections? Well, hey, guess what? There is a code you can use to get 15% off to try Micro Boost. Use the code HEALTHFIX and see what you think about Micro Boost. All right, let's get back to the podcast. So, Of course, people are going to ask me because my podcast is much about kind of getting to the insides, outs of businesses, things of that nature. Sourcing. Who's growing these things? You know, where, what are you looking for in your sources? Uh, What are you looking for in terms of with the gummies and flavoring? I know you had mentioned you've got your, your whiz kit there who's helping you with the flavoring. A lot of folks want to know natural versus artificial flavors. What kind of things are you using Give us the scoop. Give us kind of your, your background there. Great. So, uh, yeah, let me start. The I did a uh, an article for Mush or for Rolling Stone recently about mm-hmm. uh, exactly what's going on in the functional, aka adaptogenic, aka you know medicinal mushroom world. And so we talked about these mushroom coffees tasting like dirt. I'll tell you why most of them do. So when you grow mushrooms commercially, it's grown on like a starchy substrate, you know, oats or corn. And that substrate is inoculated with the uh, the spores or the liquid culture of the mushroom. Then the uh, mycelium or the roots of the mushroom fill out and grow throughout the substrate. And then it's the uh, fruiting body or the the stem and the cap or in Lion's Mane's case, this cheerleader's (laughs) bomb bomb looking uh, uh, fungus grow out. And so I'm, again, uh, shocked kind of to see to discover what most mushroom companies are doing, they'll actually harvest that, that fruiting body that that pom pom lion's mane mushroom, use that sell it in a farmer's market or, or, you know, sell it to another uh, higher end product, or even they'll just, you know, buy the, uh, the substrate, the myceliated oats, essentially, from these commercial mushroom farms because it's a lot cheaper to just buy these oats, right? And so there is some beneficial properties in mycelium, no doubt about that, uh, but they're in a very small amount. And then when you talk about the uh, the filler that is in that substrate, so most of these companies that are making dirt tasting mushrooms are just pulverizing that entire myceliated oat block. And that is what they're calling mushrooms. And right now there is a company called Namex uh, that makes fruiting body extracts and has a, has a, a brand of their own. And there's a, a handful of brands that are all petitioning the FDA to make it so companies that are using myceliated oats can't call them mushrooms because it's kind of like calling, you know, the roots of an apple tree, an apple, uh, the fruit of the of the mushroom is the the stem and the cap or the fruiting body. And that's what contains the majority of the beneficial properties in it. And, you know, I thought when we were, you know, first starting out and understanding this, I was like, what could it be? Maybe, you know, five to one, 10 to one, uh, that's uh, the fruiting body has the the polysaccharides and, you know, all the, the great properties of the mushroom in it. But the more I was, researching on this for the article, I found that it could be as much as 500 to one. So there's, you know, companies that, you know, sell the big jars of, you know, 120 two piece capsules, you could take that entire container of, uh, of myceliated oat uh, mushroom mass, or, or mushroom root mass, and that would be taking less mushrooms than like a single one of our soft gel capsules. So one of the hardest things about being, or I guess like the most time consuming things about working in these kind of uh, emerging industries is education, you know? And I was in the CBD business for, for years, still make a lot of hemp and CBD products. And that was 
the fastest boom to bust industry I've ever seen. Uh, and because, you know, everybody uh, got on this this bandwagon, tons of uh, entrepreneurs jumped into, you know, get rich quick with CBD. And I think, you know, a lot of shoddy products were put out on the market. Consequently, you know, there's a ton of media hype around it that kind of was uh, piggybacking on uh, cannabis's legalization throughout the country. And I think people try a product, you know, one, there's a bunch of crazy claims, you know, CBD companies saying you're going to throw down your crutches and start doing, you know, backflips across your living room, uh, mm. and, you know, and then you you take it and don't really notice much or, you know, don't have those extreme expectations met. And I think people like dismiss it when it has like, in addition to mushrooms, it, it's great uh, health beneficial properties, specifically with, uh, with anti uh, uh, inflammation. But, uh, but uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's the, the main difference is you know, myceliated oats versus fruiting bodies versus what we're using, which is fruiting body like extracts or concentrates. So the, the strongest amount that you can put into a, a small little dosage. This is very enlightening because one of the things that I hear from a lot of people I, in being a naturopath, I see folks that just, you know, don't do well usually with, with things and, and have a lot of allergies, things of that nature. And I've seen quite a few interesting reactions to mushroom coffee. And now it's all starting to make sense in terms of what Mida went down. So very interesting. And, and of course, this is why I want folks to tell me about their manufacturing processes, why you use what you do, because it's so important. Now let's, let's switch gears for a second. Oh, unless you got. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it, it's the, the truth in labeling. So just like, you know, if you want to buy micro boost, I would love that. But if you're, you know, at the store and evaluating, you know, which mushroom product you should buy, you can check the label. Uh, and what this petition to the FDA is suggesting is that people would need to label whether it is, you know, mycelium or myceliated oats that is used in the product. There are some companies that, you know, in the fine print on the back of their bag will say myceliated oats. But that's a, a great thing to look for if you're going to evaluate, you know, any type of mushroom product. And if you ask uh, uh, a company and, uh, you know, they're kind of uh, dodgy about it, that's probably what they're using. And, and most companies that are using fruiting bodies are shouting it from the rooftops. Yes, yes. I, I've seen, I've definitely seen that, which is now is to me makes sense. Um, I didn't know about the pulverizing of the mycelia. Now that that's me. It's gross, actually. It's kind of gross. Yeah, I mean, it, it, <laughs> making making supplements for other people, I really found that, you know, maybe I have kind of a backwards, uh, not uh, as uh, business, uh, and, you know, shrewd as these folks, you know, but they, they always start like, how can we, you know, make a product for like, a penny or less, and then, you know, convince people that it's worth, you know, $5. Uh, whereas, you know, we're always trying to think like, what is something that would be really good for me that I would be proud to share with, with my mom, with my family, with my, my, uh, my friends, and something that has really helped people. And then we'll kind of work backward from there. It's like, well, we, we do have to make money at it if we're going to help the most people. Um, and, you know, just try and figure it out. But one of the one of the most challenging parts is explaining like our 30 soft gel capsules is better than 30 bottles of your 120 uh, myceliated oats pills. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, you get what you pay for. There, there's always that. There's always that. But for me, you know, being a, being a doc that recommends supplements on a regular basis, it's one of those things where I don't want to waste anybody's money, but I also want people to get the most bang for their buck. So quality, but also processing is incredibly important to me because if I can understand how something's made and know that it's going to have the highest amount of what I'm trying to get, you know, the, the patient to get in their body, then it's a win-win. It, it just makes sense. So with the, with the gummies, this has been a long-term debate in my office about natural colors, natural flavors, things of that nature. Obviously using natural flavors of like ground up 
cherries or something, for, for example, for a flavor is not going to give you the same thought you think of when you think of cherry flavor. So I would love to hear what you guys are up to in terms of creating the natural flavors in a way that is not as chemically laden as folks would, would assume based on just the term natural flavors. Give us a scoop. Okay. Well, there, there are natural flavors and there are what are called uh, WANF natural flavors. And WANF, W-O-N-F, stands for with other natural flavors in uh, quotation marks. And, you know, just uh, the way that the U.S. Uh, food uh, labeling and, and uh, manufacturing has been lobbied is basically people can call natural flavor that is completely unnatural. Uh, so if you look for, you know, anything that says with other natural flavors or W-O-N-F flavors, those are have some some other uh, additives to them. So like you uh, uh, suggest, getting specific flavors uh, like, a, like a cherry without other natural flavors is uh, impossible to find. They're, 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 uh, unless you're, you know, grinding the cherries, making your own uh, flavors yourself, your own concentrates, extracts. Uh, that's not something that you're going to be able to get in a gummy. But uh, citrus flavors, for example, are available without the other natural flavors. So we use those, you know, whenever uh, possible. And in our uh, our five different gummy flavors, three out of the five have without other natural flavors. And then two of them do still have with other natural flavors, but as healthy uh, as we could find without, you know, putting red dye number 40 and, uh, and some of these, uh, you know, banned, you know, that we now know are, are objectively bad ingredients. <laughs> good deal. Good deal. Thanks for explaining that. I think a lot of people do still, you know, want to know what, what we're looking at in that department. And a lot of adults, Let's be real. We're all kids trapped in an adult body. We want the gummies. We want the easy to take things. And, and it's more appealing sometimes in, in certain cases. I think, you know, you kind of have it perfect on your website where you've got the gummies on one side and the and the coffee on the other. It appeals to, to all of the, uh, I guess, the easy senses for the adults. So that being said, I would love to hear what's your daily regimen. You said you do the coffee. What are, What are you doing with the capsules? Do you have like a What's your like star way to take them? Like what what do you feel like in terms of overall health optimization? What are you up to? Uh, you know, I I had a, a stomach issue the past week. So I've been adding the uh, the wellness soft gels to my regimen. But typically I'm taking two of our brain soft gels in the morning that contains uh, 1500 milligrams of lion's mane and 1500 milligrams of cordyceps. And I'm usually taking at least two cups of uh, micro boost coffee. Each one of those has 3000 milligrams of mushrooms divided over uh, lion's mane, cordyceps, chaga, rishi, and turkey tail. So 600 milligrams of each of those. I don't think there's too much mushrooms that, uh, that you can take in a given day, but so that is, uh, yeah, 9,000 milligrams of, uh, of functional mushrooms on a daily basis. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, that, that has me going and until lunch, at least, uh, sometimes I'll have an, another, uh, coffee in the afternoon, but, you know, oftentimes we're also, uh, developing new products as well. So we're working on like a new gummy flavor. Uh, right now we're working on like a, a matcha, a uh, drink. Yes. So in addition to my, my daily regimen, I'm often, you know, at least a couple of times a week trying something new. Uh, and usually when you're, when you're trying to get a flavor or product just right, you know, you make like 20 of them before mm -hmm. you find something that sticks. So, um, yeah, I, I think that I might be taking more functional mushrooms than, than anybody in like a 50 mile radius, at least. <laughs> well, it's a good point that you bring up, you know, really, I haven't seen there be, a, you know, I'm sure there's a higher end depending on every individual person, but I haven't seen there be a a level where it gets to be too much. I think the only thing I've seen is just too, like too intense a focus on certain folks with some of the lion's mane. But other than that, I haven't seen it be an in, in overkill. In fact, I feel like 
Yeah, we probably could all use a little bit more in our world. The matcha is fascinating, though. T give us more scoop there. Oh yeah, I mean we just want to want to have uh, you know just even more coffee alternatives and uh, and right now too yeah we're trying to get the uh, the flavor the color the dissolvability um, all that in and uh, and also keep it at a at a price point that's going to be affordable to people you know I wanted to put the cinnamon and cardamom you know personally into the the coffee mix one you know our our team convinced me like not everybody likes the same spices that you do uh but also you know it's going to add like you know over a dollar a bag um which you know is uh is big money in uh in supplement business when you have a product in that 25 to 35 dollar range yeah yeah for sure for sure yeah i mean i've seen bags upwards of 70 um for yeah. for a month you know it's a lot of people that's a big like oh I don't know. Um, you could probably do the math, though, with Starbucks versus the mushroom coffee. And you guys are going to come out ahead with the mushroom coffee, just saying. But Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was spending $150 a month on, on Starbucks. Easy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I, you're probably not alone, though. I mean, coming from the Pacific Northwest and the Tacoma, Seattle area. You're, you're... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of folks in that department. So at this point, you know, I think folks got a really great idea of what Microboost is all about. We know now where you guys are heading in the future, some some new flavors, things of that nature. I think, you know, at this point, I think of folks, let's tell folks a little bit more about how they can find you, the website, and then you mentioned social media and all the recipes for the mushroom coffees, because I think that is gold because people are always looking for new ideas. So give us a scoop as what you're sharing on social media, how they can find you, website, all the deals. Yeah, great. Well, it is micro boost with a Y, just like uh, mycology is spelled with a Y. And uh, we're at micro boost on Instagram. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn, but uh, every week we're posting new, uh, new recipes. Uh, we're also posting uh, information from uh, Rolling Stone articles. I publish about once a month an article about mushrooms in Rolling Stone. And most recently, I did like a, a two part series that was uh, 10 vocabulary words to, uh, you know, understand mushrooms. And I'm talking about myceliated oats and polysaccharides and and even like the Palan effect, which is a uh, uh, based on a, a book, um, How to Change Your Mind by Michael Pollan. He wrote this really seminal book about psychedelics and uh, and uh, baby boomers taking psychedelics. In his case, he came at it as a, as a skeptic. But this Pollan effect is just something like that I've been talking about, too, that is is used to describe people's over uh, hyped expectations for psychedelics being a magic bullet. Not that he necessarily should be responsible for that, but just kind of they put a name to it because his book is is probably the one number one cited as far as, you know, a piece of media that has really influenced the culture of the past six years. Uh, so if you uh, if you go on our our Instagram, you can find all my Rolling Stone articles. Uh, also, if you just search you know, Robert Johnson, Rolling Stone mushrooms or psychedelics, uh, that's a good place. I'm speaking at uh, South by Southwest in Austin on March 8th uh, with uh, a group of some really fascinating, smart people from uh, from the mushroom industry. Uh, one guy, his name's Reggie Harris. He started uh, Hyphae Labs, and that's a testing lab for testing the amount of actives in mushrooms. Uh, and then uh, Mary Carrion, she's a, a journalist who writes about all things mushrooms and cannabis, uh, super talented activist. And both Reggie and Mary have a, a podcast themselves called Hyphae Leaks. It's just talking about uh, the mushroom industry. And then uh, well, I think the funniest guy in mushrooms is Dennis Walker at uh, Micropreneur Official. Uh, he has a, a podcast called the, the Micropreneur Podcast. And he does like a daily video satirizing the uh, psychedelic industry and Mostly like, you know, the the dude bros that are, you know, with the billion dollar hedge funds trying to come in and, you know, capitalize on this like sacred indigenous medicine. It really is, you know, kind of rife for for comedy. Um, so the four of us are going to be speaking on a panel called uh, Notes from the Mushroom Underground at South by Southwest. And 
uh, a few more speaking engagements coming up. And then uh, this fall, I'm going to be uh, publishing a book on mushrooms too. So uh, excited for that and, and uh, happy to share with your, with your readers when that's available. Yeah, I would love to talk. Uh, uh, I mean, I'd love to see that. I'd love to promote it. Maybe we'll get you back on and talk about that too, because I think one of the other big things, just like you said about the psychedelics and and the perceived effect, let's put it that way, because I, I get it all the time from a lot of folks. And, and guys, I want to make sure you guys understand that Microboost is not psychedelic mushrooms. I just want to make that clear. We're going to we're just switching the conversation for a second here, you know, as, as we round out things and maybe a little preview to our next conversation. But the, the, the concept of microdosing, a lot of people will confuse mushrooms that are medicinal for wellness, for immune, for that with like microdosing and then they'll get my have a microdose that they got from somebody down the street and they'll do it for a month and they'll be like nothing happened and then they'll go for like a hero's journey and they do that and they're like yeah it wasn't really that great and then they'll tell me like yeah I don't want to use mushrooms because I don't think it's that I don't think it's that effective for me so it sounds like there are a lot of things to be thinking about in in the industry when you're looking for doing medicinal mushrooms correctly let's say taking them correctly maybe that's something Absolutely. And, you know, I think that they're, they're both sort of propping each other up. Um, psychedelics are getting a ton of media attention right now. And, and I think that's good for, you know, people just educating themselves. There's kind of a mycophobia, uh, you know, a fear of mushrooms that uh, is, is pervasive in this country. And, and I'd love to help be a part of changing that. Absolutely. Well, we will make sure we get into that. Thanks again so much for coming on, Bob. I appreciate it. And, and we'll make sure, guys, we get all of the links to all of the different things that he mentioned on our podcast notes at drjkrausnd.com. Thanks again. Great podcast. Thank you. Hey, Health Junkies. Intrigued about the possibility of mushrooms to help you with concentration, focus, reducing inflammation, and maybe even helping you to increase your resistance to infections? Well, hey, guess what? There is a code you can use to get 15% off to try MicroBoost. Use the code HEALTHFIX and see what you think about MicroBoost. Hey, fellow health junkie, thanks for listening to the Health Fix podcast. If you enjoyed tuning in, please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review, and just get that word out. Thanks again for listening.